So I'm pretty excited. I just got this through the post about two days ago. This is them just hitting the UK now. I actually pre-ordered this back last year in December I think it was but this is them only coming out now and I've got it in hand finally. So let's take a look at this and open it for the first time. I've not even opened this box yet. Obviously this is the Harvesters from War Games Atlantic, part of their Death Fields range. And in this box you get 30 multi-part hard plastic, 28 millimeter scale figures. Now when I pre-ordered this, I got it for the pre-order price of £20. And that means that for 30 figures that works out at 67 pence for per figure, which is really pretty good value. The regular price, now that the pre-order is over, is £25, and that means that these then go up slightly to 83 pence per figure, given that there are 30 figures, but that is still really, really good value. I love that they've come out with these insect warriors. I'm a big fan of Starship Troopers, so the more kind of insecty things and aliens the better always loved aliens so i'm going to really really like this kit i think let's take a look at the back you can see we've got the big blurb here about the harvesters they are the scourge of the galaxy bugs starship troopers scabs chits cack crids crick cricksores chigs space above and beyond Crizen, Blural, Fla, Crabs. There are hundreds of names for this invasive species. Humanity mostly refers to them as harvesters for how they plunder and cull every resource and living thing they encounter. The harvesters have been part of the death field circuit for as long as any beings can remember and exist even further back in the racial memories of species thousands of light years apart. Bug infestations are a constant problem for the species of the galaxy. Advanced civilizations find them a nuisance and can quickly eliminate them before they become a threat. For primitive worlds, they represent apocalypse. This box set contains enough parts to build 20 of the large bugs and 10 of the small ones, along with ranges options for ranged bioweapons. So, some of the bugs in this are going to be these small type here, and some of them are going to be the big type. Now, assuming you only want it for the big type and there's only 20, then at the pre-order price of £20, that still works out at £1 a big bug, which is still pretty good, and at the regular price of £25, then that works at £1.25 for just, if you're splitting the price just between the big bugs, which is still pretty good considering prices of things like Warhammer here in the UK, then these War Games Atlantic sets work out at really, really good quality prices. So let's take a look at this, open it up for the first time and see what we're actually getting. So in this box, have a look nothing else in there empty box we have got one two three four five sprues in here and these sprues I think are all exactly the same let me see if I lay some of these out on here and then let's have a look yeah I'm pretty sure that in your box your five sprues are all exactly the same. Sure, they are. So let's just take a look at one of these sprues in detail here. Well, the heads are always my favorite thing. So let's start by looking at some of these. You can see, let's see, get the best light on here. See these heads here have all got kind of best focus. There we go. We've got, these ones have all got kind of closed mandibles. We've got three of those with kind of closed mandible mouths. And then round this side, we've got another three here with wide open mouths. Uh, let's see, we've got two of the big kind of body pieces here. Another two of the big kind of thorax or is that abdomen? I can never remember which way round it is. I think that's maybe the abdomen and the thorax is this piece here. We've got lots of legs. The legs all look very, very similar. I imagine that those are going to connect differently. 
can see now well, they all none of them have any tabs on them so that says to me that you can maybe position those into the bodies any way you want to change them around a bit let's have a look at the bodies from here yeah again there's no kind of tabs that I can see on here they've just got these indentations here where those legs are going to go so we should be able to play around with those legs as much as we want on here let's see what else we've got legs thoraxes abdomens um, oh yeah we've got the bio weapons as well you can see as well as the legs we've got these kind of bio weapons there seems to be two different types of bio weapons uh, that they can be kitted out with unless there's another one somewhere on the sprue but I'm not being able to see it just now um, but yeah we've got these two types of bio weapons now if you use the bio weapons those are going to have to replace one of the regular legs so you're going to end up with a harvester insect which has got three legs and one bio weapon and the bio weapon as a species you wouldn't really be able to walk on that so it's a bit of an odd design in that case of course these are going to be bugs but they are going to be only four legged bugs of course on earth all of our insects are six legged so it's already quite an alien design i'm just not a big fan i don't think of the bio weapons be uh, taking up one of those leg spaces but we'll see um, and we've also got two of the miniature ones on here, two of our miniature um, bugs on there. Quite, well, it's very nice, sharp detail on those. They're going to look quite nice on there. And from what I can see, they're all going to clip off rather nicely without any major problems i'm not seeing any bits that are too close to very thin pieces on here so this looks like it should be really nice so i'm going to get some clippers and i'm going to have a go at doing that Right, you can see that I've now clipped everything off of the sprue, there's nothing left on here, and I've set them all out in a pretty logical order. We can see now that there is enough for four bugs. What I thought was an abdomen and a thorax is actually the top and the underside of a body, so we've got enough to make four of these large bugs on one sprue. We've got our two small bugs down here on our one sprue, and we've got lots of different legs. I've laid these out according to the part numbers on the sprues, so we've got R1, R2, R3, R4, etc. And we've got L1, L2, L3, L4, etc. You can see we've got two of these R1s, and we've got two of these, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, L6s. And we've got two of the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 R7s over here. But apart from that, all of these legs are really quite different from each other. All of the right legs, you can see, apart from these ones that are the same, have all got slightly different kinks and bends to them. They've got different amounts of um, spikes on them. This one, particularly, for example, here, is really spiky, these ones here, whereas these ones have got less spikes on them. So these are maybe some of the front legs for attacking and killing, and you can see We've got lots and lots of different combinations. So you're gonna be able to make up lots of different bugs which look very different from each other. You can see here though that out of all of the legs that we've got, we've only got two of those bioweapon legs, which means that although you can make four bugs using one of these sprues, only two of them, or one of them, if it's got two bioweapon arms, are gonna be able to have bioweapons. So you're not gonna be able to make all of your bugs having bioweapons, only half of them if you want to. Now there's not a huge amount of variety on the heads. As I said, there's only these two types, closed mouth and open mouth. But given that they're kind of a big bug horde, you're not really gonna have that much variation in the heads. Most of your variation is gonna come from your leg placement. I do really like the head sculpts though with their mandibles, a bit like the predator. So I think those are gonna paint up really nice. There's good level of detail on there. 
And an unexpected little bonus that isn't mentioned anywhere on the box is that we've got these four eggs here. We've got one large and one small intact egg and one large and one small burst open egg as if those aliens have hatched already. On the sprue there's only two baby harvesters and they look very very similar but you can see with the leg placements that they are slightly different. Again they've got really really nice sharp detail on here. Even the underside that you're not going to see when they're on a base is nicely detailed and those are going to paint up really nicely. I'm going to use these as rad roaches in Stargrave I think. Out of all of the pieces on the sprues these were probably the trickiest to clip out um, particularly in here uh, you're going to have to definitely clean those up a little bit but those are going to look really nice too. Of course what we're not getting with these is there is no instructions in the box anywhere and I haven't seen any instructions online either and there's also no bases for these which is worth keeping in mind when you're working out costs because you're gonna have to buy some of your own bases. We shouldn't really need instructions though because these look like they go together really really easily and it should be really obvious. We're just gonna snap those together get some glue on there and then we've got spaces for we've got space for a leg here we've got space for a leg here and I imagine the other legs yep are going to go into these indents here and here so I'm going to get some glue and try building one of these up just to see how it looks so one thing I've noticed straight away with putting these together is that these little pegs on the inside of the body pieces I would say are slightly too long. If you push them together and try to glue them with those tabs as they are you're going to end up with a body which has got this big kind of horrible gap between those two plates like that. So I would just take that little tab and snip the end off of it and if you do that then those body pieces are going to go together perfectly like this instead of big gappy ones like this so just snip that peg down and it will look much much better so here you can see i've built my harvesters and this is the entire contents of one sprue i've got my four completed harvesters i've got my two baby harvesters i've got my four eggs which i've put onto a base which you don't get with the kit I've got eight legs left over, six of the standard ones and those two weapon ones that I don't want to use and I've got two left over heads. One thing that's worth noting when I was building these is that the top of the legs at the attachment points are kind of different. These ones here have all got really small thin attachment points whereas these ones have got the much larger thicker attachment points. These ones I think are for the back legs and these ones are for the front legs. We can also see on these, if I hold this up here, that there's much more detail on one side of the leg than on the other. This one's a lot more flat and plain. This one's more sculpted. So try to make sure when you're doing these that the flat bit is the bit that gets glued against the body. As I mentioned before, there are no bases with this kit, but as you can see, you don't really need them at least in order to get them to be able to stand up even with one leg raised up in the air like these guys you can tripod the remaining three legs so that they are quite stable the unfortunate thing with these is that if you are going to try and use a standard kind of 40 mil base you are not going to manage to use it for most of these you can be very careful with your leg placement and get one of your harvesters to actually fit onto a 40 mil base but you're going to find that most of these i would say when you put them out they are not going to fit onto a base because the legs are going to be far too wide and splayed out so you're going to have to think about that and you're probably going to need larger bases than these i've got to say i love the sculpts on these and the details are really really nice they come up really well when you're building these and you've got lots and lots of options for the different positions that you put them in. The heads also work really nicely so that you can have them either looking straight ahead like this guy or you can tilt them quite easily 
and they don't look weird. There's no strange joins where they join up with the body. It all looks really natural. As far as size goes, compared to a standard Warhammer Space Marine, they're going to give him a bit of a run for his money, but they're not that huge in comparison. However, if you go with a Stargrave miniature, which is what I'm going to probably use these for, you can see they're going to be much more of a threat to these guys. And depending on how you build them, they can either be really low to the ground like this one, or they can be really high up and much more threatening. This guy looks much more threatening to this Stargrave character here than this one. And that's just to do with putting the legs a little bit closer together and thinking about how you're positioning things. But those, I think, are going to look absolutely fantastic when they are painted up and on the tabletop ready to fight your crew or whoever their opponents are going to be. These guys have been an absolute joy to build and I've still got another four sprues of them to go. So I'm going to get lots and lots of different varied combinations going. I'd highly recommend this kit, especially for the price point, and I'm really looking forward to painting these up, which I might put up in a future video. If you like what you've seen here today, please consider liking, subscribing, and leave a comment down below. And we'll see you next time on Attic Raiders Retro Reviews.